Hi guys, welcome to another massive tutorial brought to you by Direct Tutoring. Today we're going to have a look at the cosine rule. So if we take a quick overview, the cosine rule is a trigonometric rule which can be used to determine the line or angle of a non-right angled triangle. There are two formulas and you don't have to remember them as you will be given them in the exam. However, unlike the sine rule, you have two equations that you can choose from. I'll put a link in the description on how to solve the sine rule questions as well. When you label your triangle, the sides and the angle directly opposite share the same letter. So just like in the sine rule, the, the labeling of the triangle is very, very important in being able to solve any of these questions. And there are two formulas you can use depending on the information that is given to you and ultimately what the question is asking you. So the two formulas are one is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Now this is very very similar to Pythagoras. However it is this term here that brings it to a trigonometric function because this takes into account angles that are not 90 degrees. And then the other one is this is for to find an angle. So it's b squared plus c squared minus a squared divided by 2bc. This is really a a manipulation of this equation to give you this but to save time in the exam they give you each so this is for an angle this is for a line and again where the lowercase letters indicate the lengths and the uppercase letters indicate the angles so how do we choose which formula based on the question so this one here Remembering that the lowercase letters are representing lengths. So this one here is how you would find a length of a triangle based on the cosine rule. Now, the conditions are that you must know two sides and the angle directly opposite the side that you want. Because remember, A, small a, is a reciprocal of capital A. So that is the conditions that you need in order to use this equation. Sometimes a school like to call an angle sandwiched between two sides. Uh, that's the more informal way of remembering it. And then the second one is to find an angle. Now, this one can be quite obvious because if we look at the right hand side of the equal sign, we must know all three sides. Because all the lowercase letters are featured here. So in order to find the angle, we must know all three sides of the triangle. However, it is very, very important that we stick to the convention when we are labelling. So the angle that we want, the opposite side, must correspond to A. B and C, however, don't matter. Just like in Pythagoras, they are independent um, of the, the exact variable that we're looking for. So if we have a look at question number one, it says calculate the length of the side BC. So BC is this side here. So we need to work out which equation we're going to use. And we're trying to find a length, so we must use this one here. Now the more informal way of remembering this is if you have an angle sandwiched between two sides, you use the cosine rule, and it is this one here. We have an angle sandwiched between two known sides. So we need to start to label this. So we'll call this A, because this is the side that we want. Now, remembering that the reciprocal, the capital A, is the angle directly across from that side. So if this is small a, this angle in here must be capital A. Now that is the key constraint when solving this problem. B and C are interchangeable, it doesn't matter which one is which. So we'll call this B and we'll call this C. So then it is literally a case of pop all these values into the equation. We'll simplify it, we'll square root it, 
and that will give us our value of A to round up to 38 centimetres. Now you can always do a check on this because if we get a value say of 70 then we can see that it doesn't really fit the size of the the already known sides. We're looking for a value in this region. So 38 centimetres is our value of A. And then question two asks us, instead of a side, calculate the size of the angle, BAC. So this is BAC. And remember, when you have it in this form, the angle is the corner that is represented in the middle letter. So it's BA, so it's the A side that we're trying to find. So again, we must use this equation because the constraint is we must know all three sides which we do. We know this side, that side, and this side. However, just like the last question, there is one key constraint. We are trying to find cos A. So we're trying to find this value here. Now, if this is capital A, the reciprocal being 31, so this must be small a. Okay, so we call that small a which relates this to capital A. Now that is the key constraint done. Once we get this out of the way, just like the last question, B and C are interchangeable. But we'll call this B and we'll call this C. So just like the last time, we'll pop all these values into the equation. We'll number crunch this and we end up with cos A equals 0 0.5. So shift cos when that goes over to the other side. So you would press shift and then cos on the calculator will give you inverse cos. And then cos to the minus 1 of 0 0.5 will give us an angle of 60 degrees. And that is how you would go about solving the cosine rule using both of these equations, one for a length and one for an angle. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Leave any comments in the comment section below and we'll see you in the next video.